You slept with my GF? Better watch your back. This story happened to a friend of mine who lives in USA a long time ago so dialogue isn't exact. He gave me permission to post it on Reddit. For ease of writing I'll write it as if it happened to me. Due to the nature of the story, some details have been changed. Cast me Fran Karen Mies GF, had a medication addiction but was clean for two years important for later, Jill business owner Jake old friend, a hash hashtag whole of the story I live with my GF Karen and my old grade school friend Jake who was working as a sales rep. We live on the outskirts of a well-known city in the States. I was in my late 20s I found myself looking for work as a bar I was working at closed down. Knowing I was desperate for work Jake calls me and tells me his new GF Jill just purchased a motel slash bar with a small kitchen and she is after hired help. Needless to say I jump at the opportunity as Karen wasn't working, the bills were piling up and out health insurance was due. I called Jill, arranged to meet her at her new property to introduce myself. Jake made the introductions in person and had already told Jill I was hands-on DIY person with hospitality experience. Now to explain, my dad is a sparky and believes if you can pay someone to fix something, you could probably do it cheaper yourself. He taught me lots and still does to this day. After a 30-minute chat Jill tested me with a few odd jobs like rewiring an outlet, fixing a clogged sink and quizzed me on liquor laws. Needless to say I was hired that day. Originally work was all about getting the property ready for business. Jill thought it would have been minor works, paint, replacement of fixings and furniture, we soon found out the electrical wires were shot, the whole place needed rewiring which was a cause of stress for Jill as it would have blown her budget. Lucky for Jill, my dad was between contracts and offered his services using leftover stock, already paid for from other jobs, Jill would need to cover the cost of any new product required. As for labor, his payment. He said he enjoys a steak and beer on Friday nights. After a three weeks of helping dad, the wiring was done, was up to code and at a fraction of the cost. Jill and I spent one to two months painting all 15 motel rooms, bistro, bar, cleaning the kitchen, cool rooms etc. Jake would offer to help but always left after 20 minutes saying he has to make a sale. Jill often worked well into the night. After all this was her dream. I take some furniture home to restore after hours and return it once restored. Business opened up after 6 months, and thanks to dad, opened under budget. Jill managed the business and ran the kitchen, I worked where I was needed. In the kitchen, on the bar, tending to maintenance. I was on salary, second in charge and could work in any position. Things went smoothly for a year. Business was turning a profit. Dad was getting his weekly beer and steak. Karen seemed happy. Jake was still working as a sales rep for a pharmaceutical company. One day I felt crook at work, so I clocked off and went home early. Pulling into my driveway, with the exception of a turning gut, things felt normal. Jake's car was there but he lived there so I didn't think anything was wrong. As usual, I parked behind Jake, important for later. When I opened the door I found Karen doing the reverse cowgirl with Jake on the couch. After seeing me Jake grabbed his pants and ran out through the back door. Karen and I argued into the night. She tried blaming me saying I'm never home, I'm spending too much time with Jill, we were keeping things professional, I was her employee. I went to bed and told her she can sleep in Jake's bed as she clearly finds it more comfortable. I called Jill and informed her of this as Jake was her boyfriend, she was upset as he cheated on her but admitted she suspected he was seeing someone else. Jill offered me a room at the motel until I figure out my next move. The next day I loaded my personal effects in the truck. Jake's car was still there as I had blocked it in. I told Karen she can keep the rental and the furniture. I said Karen the first be back for my tools in a few hours and I would appreciate if she wasn't there. I went home that afternoon to load my tools into my truck, while I was grabbing something from under my workbench I found a bag I wasn't familiar with. Upon closer inspection, I found and a large quantity little tablets. The way they were packed and hidden made me realize they were probably ecstasy, a thorough search of the house led to me finding two more bags and about 12k in cash. I put two and two together and realized that Jake's pharmaceutical sales job was code for medication dealer, and Jake probably traded pills to Karen for romance. I was beyond angry until I realized that I have all I need to get him back. The revenge. Jake's car still hadn't moved, I went inside and grabbed his spare keys, chucked on a pair of gloves that were in the garage. I put half the money in one bag of medication in his boot and thought hang on, this won't pass, I removed his spare tire from the wheel well and put the bag in there. The other two bags, I threw them down the storm drain in the laneway behind my house. As for the 6k cash. Jake did cost me a house full of furniture. Just saying, I sent a message to both Jake and Karen with the typical hurt script, I can't believe you did this, we were friends blah blah blah. I've left I hope you two are happy together.
I then made an anonymous tip to the local police and ATF about a man fitting Jake's description, loading what looks like medication into the boot of a car that that sounded Jake's car and provided a partial number plate number that matched Jake's car. It didn't take long for law enforcement to find the car and locate the medication. What I wasn't counting on is Karen was driving the car at the time. She was later released when they found out she was driving the wrong car at the wrong time. A warrant went out for Jake's arrest. The icing on the cake. I found out later that not only was the police after Jake, his supplier was as well as he lost a lot of product. Fast forward three months, I purchased a house, I was still working with Jill. Karen was pregnant with Jake's baby and he was on the run. I suspected she was keeping contact with Jake because she suddenly left the district when she was 8 months pregnant. 12 months after the incident, after a silly night Jill and I mixed business with pleasure and started dating. That was 10 years ago. We are married, have two children and just opened our third business. Dad still gets his weekly steak and beer. I did hear a rumor that Jake and Karen wound up in Alaska but can't confirm this. I do feel a little bad about it now because Jake made it possible for me to date Jill and live a wonderful life. I do hope he is well. DLDR, best friend sleeps with my girlfriend friend, he now has police and medication gangs chasing him. Edit, my friend clarified why his dad did such a good deal for the electrical work. Apparently he had a large contract cancelled due to bankruptcy after the contract paid a sizable non-refundable deposit, which he uses for supplies. Basically he had the materials already on hand and a few weeks suddenly free up. A++ gentlemen, hi guys, please like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. That was 10 years ago, dad still gets his weekly steak and beer. I love this understanding of being loyal with your most important business partner. Please don't feel even a little bad, up. Look at Jill's children, and feel absolutely fk and great every time you think of the father, family and life they might have had, had you not gotten that sob out of her life for good. You all have worked hard for a great family, good business dealings, a proper home for your children. Look at Jill, your kids, your entire family, and feel, well done, mate, well done. And remember to hug your dad a little extra for making a man like you. Revenge is best served white beer and steak. One day I felt crook at work. What does this mean? I have never heard this expression. Aussie slang for feeling sick or unwell. Rewiring an entire little bistro and hotel is definitely worth 10 years of Friday night steak and beer. $30 bucks a meal every Friday ax 10 years seems about right to me for not having to pay for material and labor up front. Even if it was $20 a meal it would still be almost $10,000. Jake from State Farm got around I see. The only thing I don't appreciate is dumping the medication into the storm drain. This could lead to contaminating the groundwater or if the drain runs to the municipal water treatment facility, would contaminate the municipal drinking water. Don't flush nor dump illegal slash legal medication down the toilet or storm drains. I say it a lot but I'll say it again. Cheaters are the actual worst scum on this planet. They deserve everything that's coming to the memo.